Many questions I receive are by people that want to start playing music the modern way, on some kind of file based system, but they don't know where to start. This video is a short introduction. The convenience and the achievable high quality when done right appears to be attractive to many. It is to me anyway. This video will show you some of the most obvious choices, choices I have tried myself and reviewed in videos on YouTube. There is far more equipment around but I can't report on equipment I haven't laid my hands on. It is an introduction for more in depth information I would advise you to buy my ebook file based audio aka streaming audio as advertised at the end of this video. It is very affordable and you support my work too. Of some products I review here there will be a link in the top right corner when you view this video in the browser. Links to all products are also listed below this video in YouTube. Let's start with the main choice. Since file based audio is all about copying music from the CD to a hard disk, ripping in the jargon and consequently playing it from there. It is obvious that computer technology will always be involved. And that's a good thing in general. People of my age will remember the troubles a car could give in winter. You had to pull the choke and if you did it wrong, too much petrol would get into the engine making it impossible to start for the next 15 minutes. Today you just turn the key or press the start button and the computer takes care of the rest. My point is that you don't even realize a computer is at work every time you start your engine. You can have the same experience when you buy a digital player that hides all or most computer technology for you. It is almost unavoidable you have to deal with a display and a menu in some form operated by knobs on the front, infrared remote, touchscreen, tablet or smartphone. The Cocktail Audio X35 I recently reviewed is an example of a device that does it all, ripping, storing, playback, integrated amp, it can even function as a NAS without specific knowledge by you. It can be operated from the front panel, the infrared remote and the tablet or smartphone at your choice. All their products work about the same but vary in audio quality and features. A very popular digital player that can rip music to the internal hard disk as well and play it back but has no controls on the device is the Blue Sound Vault 2. It is functionally operated from a tablet or smartphone or if you like a computer. I reviewed its sibling, the Blue Sound Note 2 works the same but has no storage and no ripping facilities and no hard disk built in. The idea is that you use your own computer for ripping and storing. The Note 2 then indexes the music on your computer of the network and requests the music on playback. This means that the computer has to be switched on. You could use your computer for ripping but store the music on a so called network attached storage device, NAS for short, essentially an external hard disk that is directly connected to your home network. This way your computer can be switched off and only the NAS stays on. NASAs consume only moderate power. Where the basic functionality is concerned, the Blue Sound Note 2 is roughly equal to the Sonus Connect and the Denon Heos Link HS2 and they all come with an app for iOS and Android tablets and smartphones. But the Sonus Connect is of Clearly lower quality, it hasn't changed much over the last 10 years and is limited to a maximum quality of 48 kHz sampling. The Denon Heos Link does 192 kHz and has many connection options, but is only slightly better in sound quality than the Sonos. The Blue Sound also does 192 kHz but does MQA2 and can function as a rune endpoint. The sound quality tops the other two. All three brands also have a model that includes an amplifier, you only have to hook up the speakers and your set. The Cocktail Audio X35 I mentioned also includes an amplifier. Denon offers a 5.1 receiver under the Heos brand as well. 
The non-HEOS AV receivers by Denon and many other brands usually only support digital playback using the DLNA or UPnP AV protocol. Both protocols are virtually identical and not ideal for music streaming. You need to run DLNA or UPnP AV server software on your computer and these are usually very slow when you browse through your music. Minim Server is a good one but it takes serious study to get it working really fine. Streamers by for instance Project and Philips use DLNA and more upmarket brands like Lin and Name do too. Dealers that do the more upmarket brands will often help you with setting up a DLNA server. Further upmarket there are brands like Orenda, Meridian Sulus, NAD and many more. The real music lover that is not scared of ripping using a computer but looks for a real consumer electronics audio player is very well served with the ELEC Discovery DS-S101G. Just put your music files on a hard disk and connect it to the Discovery and you have almost the best software guiding you through the music since it uses a light version of the fantastic Rune software. There are many other systems around, some like Google's Chromecast and Apple's AirPlay which are lower or equal in quality to the Sonos Connect and Yamaha's MusicCast which I have no experience with. In a number of cases I mentioned, a computer was needed for the storage and or ripping. If you use the computer for storage, it means that it has to be switched on when you want to play music. Solutions that contain a hard disk or can work with an external hard disk, for instance connected to a USB port, don't need that. Depending on your personal situation this can be of importance. If you use your laptop to store the music, chances are it's in or near the living room and thus easy to switch on. But a large gaming PC in the computer room at the third floor means you have to climb up two flights, switch it on and go down again. That's not really convenient. Having such a power hungry computer switched on all the time isn't advisable either money wise. There is a technique to have the audio equipment switch on the computer over the network called Wake on LAN but there computer knowledge is absolutely needed. This is where the NAS came in. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and is in fact a simple computer that initially as only task, shares the hard disks in it to the computers on the network. Over time they also started providing simple tasks including DNLA and Squeezebox Logitech Media Server facilities. Within the limitations of those server programs and if your music collection is not too big, this works fine and simple. I personally prefer a computer that shares its hard disk since they often are more powerful and compared to the more powerful NASA's cheaper and more versatile. But you do need some computer experience to set it up. A good solution for this is a compact type of computer like the Intel NUC. This tiny computer available with a variety of processors uses little power, is affordable and easy to place. Depending on your needs you can use a Celeron processor, for instance for simple sharing, or use an i3 for advanced programs. If you want to have the computer do a lot of DSP work as well, an i7 processor would be the right choice but this is beyond the scope of this video. To give you some insight in what you need, systems that do their own indexing of your music collection like the Sonos and the Blue Sound just need a hard disk to be shared which takes little computational power. Systems that use DLNA or UPnP AV use a little bit more computer power, just like the LMS server the Squeezebox system uses. Squeezebox is no longer for sale but the standard still is used. More on that in the next chapter. The most advanced system, Rune, does need an i3 at minimum. This is a relatively new development, a software only product supported by hardware from many manufacturers. So you buy the software, install it on a computer and use one or more of the digital players made by manufacturers as networked audio adapters or playback stations if you like. 
You could also place the computer near your stereo and hook it up directly to your stereo. This might give a less perfect sound depending on the computer and the connection you use, but it's cheaper. You do need a fanless computer of course. If you already own a digital to analog converter, DAC for short, a CD player that can act as one, or a receiver or amplifier that has digital inputs, you can use a so called networked audio adapter to link the DAC, amp or receiver to the music collection on your hard disk. Very good ones are the SOTM SMS200 if you need a USB output or the Magna Hi-Fi Mano player if you need an SPDIF or I2S output. Slightly below that you find the Raspberry Pi based devices like the Bryson BDP Pi digital player and the Audiophonics Rasp Touch that are offered as ready to use devices. It becomes really DIY if you order the tiny Raspberry Pi computer board yourself, add an audio board and a power supply and build it in a nice housing. Then select appropriate, often free software and install it on an SD card and you're set. See the Raspberry Pi for audio playlists for more details. If you don't have a DAC or if your amplifier or receiver has no digital inputs, you could consider buying a board for the Raspberry Pi that does the digital to analog conversion for you or buy a separate DAC to do that. The latter is the preferred choice in general. So you can hook up a computer directly to the stereo. If you use a silent computer, no fans, and a good audio file software that works bit perfect, you can obtain an audio quality most people don't have. Using a device like the Cocktail Audio or Blue Sound Vault might be a better choice for those that don't like computers in the living. Solutions like the Blue Sound Note 2 or the ELAC Discovery are somewhere in between. A simple network audio adapter in combination with existing equipment can be very economical. If you are really serious about audio quality and want a simple to operate solution that sounds good, the list of Orenda, Lin, NAD, Name, Meridian and others might be where you find a satisfactory solution. Top of the line networked audio adapters like the ones from SOTM combined to a very good DAC or a DAC that has networked audio adapter integrated like the MyTech Manhattan DAC 2 or the PS Audio Direct Stream combined to an Intel NUC running RuneRock as a server delivers a very high, high price performance. Many of the products mentioned here are reviewed by me and the list of links is below this video on YouTube. I hope this helps you further. If you have general questions please post them in YouTube under this video. Don't mail or PM me and don't ask me personal advice, I simply can't spare the time to answer them. If invest some time in reading my book and subscribe to this channel or my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>